Yes, <laughs> stand in front of me. I don't oh, want to be in the shot. I'm, I'm not in the shot at all. Oh, all right. What's up guys, it's Tom with Veris Engineering and today we're going to go over the install for the flat underbody panel on the GT350R. The flat underbody panel kit and the turning vane kit is part of the Ventus 1 kit for the GT350R. The entire reasoning behind the Ventus 1 kit was to reduce drag for the factory GT350 and GT350R. By cleaning up the underbody and adding a flat underbody, we're able to reduce drag. The first part in the underbody panel kit is the fender liner kit, which is necessary for the underbody. And then we have the flat underbody panel kit, which we're installing today, and the turning vanes. The turning vanes is the final part. This creates a strong vortice, which actually improves diffuser function and creates more downforce. All right. so. Here we got an overview of the parts that we're going to be installing. We've got the underbody panel here. We've got various brackets that we'll need to install it. We got a nice little hardware kit. And again, for the driver's side, we have the actual underbody panel and various brackets. The panel is actually two pieces and these three pieces in the middle are brackets that will hold them on. Okay, so here's the general area that we're going to be working. Um, middle of the car towards the outside is the exhaust, but basically we're going to be filling in this, this void on both sides. Uh, you can see it's not as big on the pat or driver's side as it is on the uh, passenger side, my God. Um, but basically this is an add-on for the fancy little fender extractors we have here. And it's going to take the fender extractor and extend it all the way to the, close to the, the rear wheel and smooth out the underbody of this car a pretty decent amount. So to start off on the passenger side, we're gonna be installing this, uh, what do you call it? Fold nut, speed nut, whatever you wanna call them. So basically, you're just going to slide this through the hole and there is a little tang on the bottom it will snap into place once you're in the right spot. So that is the first thing we need to do. The second and third thing we need to do is install this hex rivet nut. And then we're going to install this regular circular M6 rivet nut. This one will need to be stepped out to 3 8 in order to accommodate the rivet nut. This one, which is the outboard rivet nut, is going to be in a square shaped hole. So that is going to be the one that the hex head or the hex rivet nut goes into. Okay, so we've got three brackets that we're gonna install on the car. We have the front bracket, just like a triangle looking thing. We've got the middle bracket, looks like a strap. And then we've got the rear bracket, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and install these and we're gonna do a panning shot and we'll show you the orientation of how they're, how they're installed on the car. And then we'll move on to the driver's side. All right, here's the brackets installed. So we've got the forward bracket here, moving back. We've got the middle bracket with one button head cap screw installed in the hex rivet nut that we installed and the circular rivet nut that we installed. A quick note on this hole, again, you may need to bump this out to 3 8 of an inch with a 3 8 inch drill bit. Um, moving on, we've got the rear bracket here uh, this is going to be installed with the existing hardware. That's a 13 millimeter nut that is already on the car. Um, all these brackets should have slots on them. The slots, I typically start with them centered. Um, that way we have room. To, oh my God, where am I here? Uh, that way we have room to move uh, in either direction once we get the under panel on. Moving over to the driver's side, we've got forward bracket, very similar to the passenger side, except on this one, we're going to not stand in front of the light. 
We're gonna install it using a Torx bolt. That is a T30 Torx. And that is the hardware that already exists holding this plastic piece on from the factory. Moving towards the rear, we've got the center bracket that is held on with this, um, honestly, I don't know what to call this, but it is threaded and it is in the shape of a hex. And I can tell you it's a 23 millimeter. Ours came off by hand. Uh, if you have a 23 millimeter laying around or an adjustable wrench or a regular wrench, that might work as well. Just basically put it on, take it off and put it on hand tight. Then the rear bracket, we're gonna be using existing hardware again, just like the other side. It's a 13 millimeter nut, and we're gonna install that basically parallel or perpendicular to the car. And we're gonna try and get that in the center of the slot. One eternity later. Okay, off camera, I ended up installing the under panels. Basically the lift arms get in the way, so I can't do that while I'm filming. But now we've got them installed. We're gonna to move to kind of a panning shot and a voiceover situation. But what we've got is we installed everything with M6 by 1.0 hardware, 16 millimeter long button head cap screws, sorry. With the 18 millimeter fender washers. The slots in the holes, you'll notice, uh, basically some of them are in the middle and, and some are kind of adjusted around uh, towards the end of the slot. That's what they're there for. The big thing to note here is we have notches cut out in the outer edges of the under panels. You wanna try your best to line them up and center them with the notches in the pinch weld. And once you have that all set up, go ahead and tighten up the bolts. I like to, again, start all of the bolts and make sure that they all go in. Then once they're all lined up and they're all threaded in a little bit, then we can go ahead and actually tighten them down. We're gonna go six foot pounds on all of the M6 bolts. Okay, so what we have here is the turning vane that we're going to install into the under panels we just did. If you've got this accessory, this is basically what it'll look like with one of them installed. So we're going to install it by sliding the turning vane in from the top down and installing two M12 by, or I'm sorry, M6 by 1.0, 12 millimeter long button head cap screws. Here's what it looks like before you put, you slide it in. Here's what it looks like after. Obviously the one hole does not have a bolt in it. I'm gonna bolt these up and I'm gonna get to some glamor shots again. <laughs> 